Well, the election is done. And as of Friday, November 13th, when I'm recording this video, it sure looks like Joe Biden is gonna be our next president. What does that mean for silver and gold? And what might a savvy move be for us stackers who want more ways to invest in precious metals? Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Today, we have Blair Naughty, the president, CEO, and director of Great Thunder Gold Corporation. He and I will be discussing what we see coming for silver and gold. We'll discuss physical precious metals over the short and long term. And we're going to get some insight into the explosive mining sector. People, if, if you've avoided this area of investing with gold and silver, you need to listen to this video. I mean, all the way through, really. I am convinced we have a great investment opportunity staring us in the face, and that is the gold and silver mining sector. Now, I have gone in on several mining stocks. Most of you probably know that already. I you know, uh, got in not too long ago, and I set up a model portfolio. You can see it right here. Those five uh, mining stocks, though, these are larger, more well-established companies, but I'm strongly considering a much more speculative play in what is called the junior mining sector. Folks, this is an area where massive returns are possible. Now, obviously, you should all be careful with your own investment dollars. Don't just start, you know, clicking some ticker symbol in your Robinhood account because Yankee likes it. No, no. Do your own due diligence. That said, one of the juniors I'm considering is that one right there, Great Thunder Gold Corp. Mr. Naughty has over 30 years of experience as a securities broker, a capital market professional, a venture capitalist. He's founded several companies. He's gained a lot of experience in all facets of private and public markets. This guy knows his stuff, folks. So Blair, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for sponsoring this video as well. Well, thank you for having me. I am super excited to learn more about Great Thunder Gold. But before I let you dive in, I, I'd really like to take like a, a 30,000 foot view on what we've just gone through. Uh, in not even three, two, in not even two weeks, actually, the elections are done. Results are almost hundred percent. Joe Biden apparently won, right? Um, but we got recounts that are coming. Uh, there's going to be some runoffs for Congress in January. Not shocking to me, at least the president is refused <laughs> to concede to Biden. His administration is just, you know, re rejecting any appearance of assisting with the transfer of power. I mean, he doesn't want anything to do with it, it seems. Litigation's going on in several states. And I just heard today White House Trade Advisor Peter Navarro say that until all this mess is done, quote, our assumption is a second Trump term. Any speculation about what Joe Biden might do, I think, is moot at this point. <laughs> in light of all that, Blair, what do you, what's your take on this? What, where do you think silver and gold prices are going to go? <laughs> well, I will say our politics in Canada are much less exciting oh, uh, as far as gold and <laughs> silver prices. Uh, you know, gold and silver's best friend is fear and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this could only bode well for the for the future price of uh, gold and silver. It really is a longer term trend forming anyways with, uh, with the economy and it, it's just it's the way it's going regardless with no matter who gets in there e either one of them is going to be running that printing press um you know you got the coronavirus ravaging businesses and people uh, are hooked on government cash so. right i, I was going to ask you that i mean monetarily fiscally is there really going to be any change with the biden administration in your in, in your uh, I might print a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> a little faster, uh, right? Well, I mean, the, the Democrats are, are known to, to be uh, a little more uh, generous with the capital. Mm -hmm. No matter who gets in, they, they're faced with a horrific situation here. The coronavirus devastating the economy and mm -hmm. and uh, they really have no choice. So, mm -hmm. I mean, because the U.S. dollar is 
you know, the, the gold price is pegged to the U.S. dollar. Yep. You know, just basic fundamentals, you know, as the U.S. dollars go spinning out off the machines uh, at a record rate, you mm-hmm. know, it, that's got to it's got to cause gold to go up. Well, think about it, too. I mean, gold, let, let, let's just look at gold for a minute. It has been a better performing asset than the NASDAQ, better than the S&P 500 since 2000. Yet, I bet you outside of those watching this video right now, us stackers, I don't, people don't seem to get it. Global ownership is only about a half a percent of what you know major assets are, like bonds and stocks and real estate. Where's the love, Blair? <laughs> I don't know. And you know what? I, it doesn't get much school. does not get a lot of respect. And maybe, it, mm. and for the older generation, maybe so. But I mean, this, uh, this new millennial generation, uh, you know, they seem to think Bitcoin is a great place to be. You can't stack I know. Bitcoins. Uh, well, not physically, at least, right? Uh, and if you if you build yourself a little stack, you have a very good chance of a stack attack, and uh, and losing your bitcoins to somebody else. So, no, I I, um, I, li- I like the physical. I'm showing it right now, Blair. <laughs> oh, but yeah. but the fiscal stimulus. Do you yeah. think that that could be a catalyst that sends gold? I don't know above two thousand all time highs. Well, it's funny. There was a Twitter thing on Sunday. It was a Twitter poll that was, you know, it looked like there was quite a few people voted on it. Mm. And it was, is this the week that gold's going to break 2000? I think gold was at around 1965, Mm -hmm. 1970. And that was on Sunday. And 85% said yes. And of course, Monday morning, I wake up at six in the morning. I'm rubbing my eyes. I pull up Kitco and, you know, rub my eyes five more times. (laughs) What the hell's going on here? Pulled down a hundred bucks. So I guess what everybody thinks is going to do something, it doesn't mean it's going to do it. And it usually does the opposite. But they generally come back to normal again in a couple of days. And that's, you can see that's coming back already. I just have to say at the end of October, I don't know if you probably don't know this, Blair, but I made a prediction $30 silver in 30 days. I don't think that's very likely. I mean, the vaccine announcement came out. You know, it was going up. It, everything yeah, was going oh, yeah. up, right? And then, boom, that vaccine hit and or the announcement. And it's like, I don't think I'm going to be right by the well, end I mean, of November. One of the, one of the people I, I, I really follow closely is Eric Sprott. He thinks silver could be going as high as 160. I think it's, triple digits you know. is eventually going to happen. <laughs> Definitely. Well, no, and how about I have heard $30 quickly, et cetera. Yeah, uh, and you know fine. what? I mean, the best laid plans, I guess you, you, <laughs> you never expect a, a vaccine to come out. And of course, everybody's that was a shock. Now that, that was a total maybe two years till yeah. they actually get access to it. So. Although the timing was kind of interesting, right? After the election. I, 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 it was, I yeah, they were going to give Trump the credit for that vaccine. <laughs> actually, when he was talking about vaccines being closed, they were lambasting. Oh, they were, they weren't they? Course. Oh, Once yeah. the election's done, there's a vaccine. Surprise, surprise. But back to gold. Goldman yep. Sachs, Wells Fargo, they've had price predictions for 2021 of like 2300 bucks. Bank of America said 3000 Do you think those predictions are like crazy or do you see that uh, as a possibility? I, I you know, I... I think three thousand is more likely than twenty three hundred. I mean, wow. but I, again, I'm not an economist. Yeah. Banks tend to be uh, conservative, so mm. I would actually, you know, take these as conservative estimates. I mean, the people that are in the banks and banking system kind of understand this stuff better than the, the general public. So yeah. there's got to be something there. I mean, the price is heavily manipulated by other major banks, not yep. the ones listed here, likely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you so know, that has to be unwound at some point. I so. agree. I agree. A really quick question on silver. We're going to get to the mining yeah. stocks right out of this, guys. But I yeah. know there's a lot of people watching this video that love the silver. Okay. And oh, yeah. I've, I've heard some from some corners of the stacking community that silver is scarce. It's oh, a dwindling yeah. precious metal resource. Yeah. Some people, yeah. they'll say, Yankee, no, that's, that's crazy. It's not. What's the truth, Blair? Well, as I said, I mean, I talked to Eric quite often about this and, uh, you know, mm. he, he's sort of a silver, silver guru nowadays. Mm-hmm. And, and he, the, the ETFs are consu- between the ETFs and, and industry. I mean, they're consuming more than is coming out of the ground. So there's a silver deficit all the time. Mm. And, and, you know, if you're going to buy, uh, <laughs> you're going to buy silver coins right now, you're sure. paying 
far above the spot price of silver to get those coins. It's amazing. Uh, really there's a, those are very difficult to get your hands on. Yep. And with Biden coming, I mean, if we're going solar and all, you know, that's going to, mm. I mean, there's so much more industry that requires silver that it's just going to get harder and harder to, to get your hands on silver. All right. Now we're going to talk about mining stocks, and I am really excited about this, uh, especially about Great Thunder Gold specifically. <clears throat> Earlier, I showed my uh, mining stock model portfolio at the beginning, right? I've chosen up till now to focus on majors, specifically, you know, like streaming royalty companies, but I am about to take the plunge into some junior resource companies. And there seems to be a lot of excitement with juniors. Uh, I've seen it grow. So you know, why is that, uh, uh, Blair? Why? Well, I think it's coming. It's a right place, right time sort of trade. I mean, these things go in, you know, six to eight year cycles. And, you know, if, you know by, by the end of year seven and eight, it's mm. frothy as heck and everything's <laughs> going crazy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, three years ago, if you, if you told somebody they should buy a mining stock, mm. nobody would care. But, but now, you know, the fundamentals are all lined up for it. And junior mining stocks, you know, they can be life changing. I mean, it's yep. a, it's a very, it's like you know, it's treasure hunting for adults with some high tech machinery. So when <laughs> I when, when I started when I was 18 years old, I'm 49 now. Wow. Uh, I was you know working the trading blotters at a at a at a brokerage firm, and I, I was always attracted to these penny stocks. I mean, we're looking mm. at all the bank stocks, this that. But then I would look at these penny stocks in the blotter. I'd see that some people are buying them at 10 cents, 12 cents, 15, 16, 18, the same day. <laughs> so that, that caught my attention when I was yeah, younger. Yeah. And this is uh, the first stock I ever bought was uh, one called Sycamine Gold. And I remember I bought 10,000 shares at 10 cents. Oh. Four days later, it was halted. They announced a big discovery and opened at $1.20. And that was it for me. I mean, that was, I was hooked. Blair, I am a newbie in this mining space, but I have learned a few things. I've been reading a lot and there are a few critical things to look for in a mining company. The first one, and I want you to speak to these, okay? The first one is management. Yep. Those that run the day-to-day -day are so critical to the success of a company. And I think even more so with a mining company than with some other types of organizations. Do you agree with that? I agree with that, yeah. So tell us about your management team. I'm going to bring this up too because there's some really great people here. Uh, you're the CEO, president, director, right? Yeah, and, and, and for myself, I mean, I've been at this now for 31 years. Wow. I'm not always in junior mining, but in, in the market and, and understanding both the mining side as well as the capital market side. And I mm -hmm. think it's important that you have a CEO that understands both sides. You're no longer a private company. You are a public company. So you have a responsibility of the shareholders mm. to also let other people know about the company and, uh, and, and keep the share investments liquid. So people right. have an ability to enter and exit and, hmm. and don't get trapped in the hotel, California. I originally was a large shareholder of the company. And I pointed them towards this uh, this area. Our CFO Glenn Wallace, you know, he's a top-notch uh, CFO. He's also can double as a lawyer and does a great job uh, keeping us in line yep. and keeping the numbers steady. Um, John Morell is somebody. He's, he's an independent director. He's a wonderful guy. He's a very successful businessman. He's a shareholder of the company. And then uh, Richard Macy is a is a close personal friend of mine, you know, wow. since I've been 13 years old. Well, he's run many oh, successful great. operations. And he was actually the CEO of this company. I took oh. the job from him. Hmm. Wow, that's great. <laughs> he remained on as a director, wonderful <laughs> and guy. And he's still a friend. <laughs> uh, he still is. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. No, that that's wonderful when that, that type of uh, succession can occur and working together oh, yeah. like that's fan fantastic. What about David? Your other, uh, David, David Mitchell. is a wonderful guy. I've known him for a long time. He's a, he's a world-class metallurgist, mm. uh, fluent in Spanish and French, has lived in Peru, Mexico, all over the world. He wow. really understands the mining business. And, uh, you know, he's a recent ad, and I'm really happy to have him. So. Excellent. Wow, that sounds like a phenomenal Team Blair, well done. Management, it's critical component, folks, in selecting a mining company. But there's another important aspect, and it's insider ownership. 
Mm. When I'm investing, I look for companies where the management owns a significant number of shares versus the float. I don't know if you know what the float is. That's the outstanding shares owned by you know, you and I, retail and the investors. So in other words, I look for management that has some skin in the game. And let me tell you, from what I've been reading, Great Thunder Gold stacks up really impressively. Blair, you said you own a lot. I think it's like 17% stake in your yeah. company. Is that right? I think it's 17, 17 to 19 in that area. I've never really counted. You don't, I don't count my stacks. <laughs> you don't count your stacks. Uh, <laughs> But I do file it as available on SETI and for, for information. Um, that's good. But I think the, Mr. Eric Sproul. Oh, yeah, that's about. that's the big one. Now, I, I, I got to jump in here because I don't know if a lot of people know who Mr. Sprott is. This is a big player, folks. He, he He's yeah. legendary and he's a you know, he's a mining billionaire. He's he's incredible. I, I've read a lot of what he's uh, you know written and I'm just a, a big fan of Eric Sprott. He's, he, he's a large silver and gold stacker too. He is a stacker. Well, yes. He's got some pretty large stacks too. Oh man. He's the second largest shareholder in your company, right? <laughs> yep. I mean, I, I was lucky back in 1994 when I was 24 years old, I ended up actually, uh, you know, getting recruited to go work at a place called Sprott Securities. Yes. Uh, which he was the CEO and founder. Yep. I know. Uh, it was a small that. shop with about 15 to 20 people at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, fortunate to actually get to sit next to Eric, who sat out with everybody else. He was not the, the owner sitting in the big corner office. He was out there with his sleeves rolled up in the trenches mm. and, and a, a, a wonderful boss and leader and a great person to learn from. So I remember I ran into him in 2000. And, uh, you know, I was doing really well, you yep. know, I was 30 years old, you know, a couple million bucks in the, in the, in the, the big tech boom. Mm -hmm. And he said, Oh, you're in tech stocks. You're going to lose all your money. <laughs> and he said, I am short all the tech stocks and I'm buying the miners. Two weeks later, all my millions were gone and he was fund manager of the year. And it was an incredible turn. Blair, when was this? What year? I'm sorry, I missed it. When, when this did was it... 2001, I guess. Oh somewhere yes. Around there yes. When, when the tech the tech, tech hack bubble. happened yeah. Yeah. two weeks after that 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 meeting that we had together. <laughs> Thirty oh, wow. years old, thinking I'm really smart, and bang, <laughs> you know, all my money was gone, and the rich got richer. So. Well, he's a billionaire now. <laughs> he owns over, I think, almost fifteen percent of your company, and it's like yeah, it's somewhere in the fifteen to twenty percent. That's range. amazing. Well, I mean, he's a big lover of Wallbridge. Oh yeah, and, let's. Uh, and he's the largest shareholder of that. And Wallbridge just took over Balmoral. He was the largest shareholder of that. Uh, he was the largest shareholder of Kirkland Lake that just took over Detour Gold, which Whoa. is on the same trend. Can we talk about Wallbridge sense. for a minute, Blair? Because sure. that struck me. I mean, if you look at, I'm, I'm showing a chart right now of Wallbridge Mining. In just five years, its share price is up over 3,000%. That's yeah. like that's like turning $3,000 into $100,000, people. How rare is that, Blair, to do to do this? I, 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 would, I would say that it's not that rare if you can ride that out. I mean, there's wow. been plenty of opportunities in junior mining and, mm. and tech etc mm -hmm. to make you know those types of returns uh but i mean there's a lot of peaks and valleys along the way so a lot of people you know had chances to make that kind of i mean that would be getting at the very bottom and you know right, selling right, at the very right. top sure sure know, obviously nobody can really do it's time but uh right. but that's still amazing you know, it's really hard when you have you know if you buy something at 10 20 cents and it's up to a dollar 50 and it falls down to 80 and the next time it goes to a dollar 50 you know you're shaking you know <laughs> and then you know you got to hold on. You got to ride the cycle as long as you can, and sure. as long as nothing really has changed to the negative side, you know that's that's how you make the real money. So, so this is insider ownership. You and Eric own a whopping, I don't know, thirty-one percent stake, almost a third of Great Thunder Gold. That's huge, people. That's what you should be looking for in a mining company: insider ownership. There's a couple other things I want to cover. First, I'm going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Blair Naughty. All right, we're back, guys. Thank you so much. We're, we got Blair Nadi, CEO of Great Thunder Gold with us. What, what are the three most important things about real estate, Blair? You you, you know this, I'm sure. <laughs> location, location, location. You got it, man. <laughs> location is everything. So yeah. tell us about this Detour Lake District up in Quebec. 
Well, I mean, the, the Detour Gold Mine, which is on the western part of the trend on the Ontario side, actually, mm -hmm. um, has been a, a, a wonderful deposit for Detour Gold. It just got bought by Kirkland Lake. Mm -hmm. It's spinning out a ton of cash. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that, that's to the western side of it. Mm -hmm. Now, Wallbridge, actually, there was a small little mine called the Fenlon Mine. And it, you know, it, was, it was a pretty decent looking prospect, uh, but... The problem with the that area is there's so much overburden. So I mean, that overburden meaning there's 30 to 50 feet of dirt before you hit hard rock. It's you know it's difficult to find stuff there. You know you, you're not tracking stuff with your surface samples in traditional traditional ways. Yep. And I think uh, you know a new geological team with new lenses came in mm. and uh, started to drill deeper. And when they started mm. drilling deeper, they started to hit some huge intercepts of high grade gold. And uh, the Wallbridge stock, as you said, has yeah. been a massive success. It's uh, now you uh, said you said high grade. That's the king, right? When it comes yeah. to gold exploration, right? Yeah, grade is grade it's is huge. number one. So how does that? I'm looking right now where I have the map up. I see the northbound extension. I see northbound. I see the southern star. How yeah. how does that? How does Great Thunder Gold fit into what we're seeing here uh, with Wallbridge and, and Fenelon? The old saying is the best place to find a mine is next to a mine. And so I mean, this uh, geological trend goes east west. The, um, I know Wallbridge was starting to drill to the north towards mm -hmm. the Jeremy Pluton, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they were having great success, and they thought that the trend was going northwest. So, I mean, that's mm -hmm. where Great Thunder is, is to the northwest, directly attached. The ironic thing is Wallbridge bought the Fenlon deposit from Balmoral. Yep. Wallbridge ended up taking over Balmoral. You know, Davies swallowed <laughs> Goliath. Wow. Uh, Balmoral had a big chunk of the trend going east-west, but they didn't have the mine anymore. Yeah. But the day before they were taking over and to our, you know, uh, surprise and, and, and happy surprise, uh, Balmoral, the day before the announcement, announced uh, a really big high-grade hit on the south part of their property, which is closer to our, uh, our southern properties to the south, just about three kilometers, which is, I think, about a mile and three quarters. They really got us excited because that was, you know, in mining terms, you know, it might not sound like you're that close when you're when you're a mile and three quarters away, but mm -hmm. that is uh, that's a, that's right next door. Um, that in, my, in, um, in the mining world. Yep. So, yeah. People, locations so. key. We're hearing it right here, especially yeah. when it comes to. Oh, I, I want to mention this um, stability, safety. I don't know if you know this, Blair, but I'm like less than 600 miles as the crow flies from where, where this is. <laughs> okay, I'm up in New Hampshire, so I, it's not far. And for me, that's huge. I love the comfort of the, you know, the region, the nation that this mine is in. Uh, in other words, let me just say this. Let me say this. Uh, if you had two similar deposits, same type of grade, same type of tonnage, whatever, but one's located in Quebec like this, and the other is, I don't know, in uh, Africa, say. Yeah. <laughs> give, give me Quebec. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion, that deserves a higher valuation, oh. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, Quebec is such a wonderful place it, to work. In the rankings that constantly come out of mm -hmm. uh, best places to mine in the world, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. either number one or two. It trades places with Nevada. See, I mean, that's it's right up there. You're not worried about expropriation and political instability. I mean, there's so many factors in location. So that brings me to the fourth uh, point that I want to bring out is how far along the project is. If you're looking at a, a you know a junior, you want to know is it like you know a feasibility phase? Is it in the oh. discovery phase? I mean, are you drill ready, Blair? We are drill ready. We have our targets picked out. Uh, we have uh, applied. We we got our timber rights for a lot of which is oh, what nice. you apply for in Quebec to take some trees down to mm -hmm. set up your drill. Mm -hmm. uh, we are have a tender out to 10 different drilling companies, which we're just working through that. And uh, we are hoping to be drilling in December. Wow. Is it, is it, so, has it frozen it's up? It's already yet? cold enough. <laughs> is it frozen up yet? Up there? It, it's getting there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so people, if you don't know this, you don't want to be late to the party when you're talking juniors. Yeah, help me with this Blair, but from what I've read as a project 
de-risks, you know, goes through its various steps. Like the, like I mentioned, the feasibility, maybe yeah. aerial flyovers, you know, and discovery and all that. The price of the stock tends to go up, right? Well, I mean, there's, there's usually, you know, without making forward looking statements and not okay. my stock in all particular. Right. <laughs> yep. Um, there tends to be speculation if you're if you're drilling in a prolific area in a in an area that has not been drilled or maybe you know has been barely tested and drilled mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh there's always speculation you know that you know any kind of large intercept or hit you know is a game changer for a junior company so yeah. so there's always a run up to the uh you know, not always but there's generally a run up towards uh the assay results so i mean the drilling would take, you know, depending on how many meters we're drilling, let's mm -hmm, say it's a mm -hmm. two to four week drill program. It's about a six to seven week process from your drill drill holes till you start to get some assays back from the lab. So yep. it's generally, you know, speculation and excitement uh, leading up to that. Well, I know you're not talking about forward looking statements, but I'll tell you, no. your, your, your company's performance has been impressive. I'm showing the chart right now, current share yeah. price. I think this is as of November 3rd, it was like 79 yeah. cents, I think around that. Uh, you can see the 52 week high and low there, guys. Look at that chart. I, you must be very pleased, Blair, with what's going on. I am, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very excited that we're finally gonna get a drill on the project and, and, mm. and uh, do some treasure hunting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the ticker symbol right now uh, for people to see right here. As of November 3rd, you can check. It's listed in Canadian Stock Exchange GTG for the U.S. It's an over-the-counter stock, GTGFF right there. You can see it. How can people get more information from you, Blair, and how can they reach you? Uh, you know, Can they talk to you directly? Do they need to talk to somebody else if they have questions about this? Sure. I mean, on the website, uh, greatthundergold.com, there's an investors section where they can look at a presentation. Yeah. They can email the company, info at greatthundergold.com. Mm -hmm. Somebody will get back to them, whether it's me, uh, uh, depends on the day. Um, but somebody will definitely get to them right away and answer any questions they may have. That's great. So guys, remember, this is a speculative play. This is a micro cap stock inside of a, an OTC, right? There are many factors that can affect the price of the mining stock, especially a junior, okay? We've discussed some of them, but the price of gold and silver, Blair, that's a huge factor, right? This is a leveraged investment. I mean, if silver and gold, you know, jump up in price, which I think we believe it will, uh, miners like great, Thunder Gold are likely to profit immensely, and in, yeah. in, in so could you and I if we invest in it. So again, this is a speculative play. You need to be careful, do your own due diligence, but I see a tremendous team. You got inside management that has skin in the game. You've got a premier mining investor like Eric Sprott who's in it. Um, your location is, like you said, right next to proven mines. And the project is, you know, past its earliest stages. I mean, you're ready to start drilling. Is there anything else, any other reasons why I and others watching this video should be, you know, excited about Great Thunder Gold as a potential investor? Well, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. We all have a vested interest as large shareholders to make this successful. I mm. think the stock is structured for success mm. uh, with good shareholders. We have a lot of money in the bank, so we don't really need to suffer any more dilution at this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, myself as the CEO, uh, I'm always in the trenches of talking to people about acquiring more properties or other opportunities for the company to add shareholder value. So Awesome. Well, this has been a lot of fun, Blair. Thank you. Very informative. Thanks. Appreciate it. Again, the information on Great Thunder Gold will be in the description of my video down below. You just, just click that little carrot button. You'll, you'll definitely see all the information you need. So definitely check out Great Thunder Gold Corp. Thanks so much, Blair. All right. Thank you for having me. And I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.